Dumps it up. Michael Jordan. Oh, my goodness. What an unbelievable. Dreams to pump as good as it gets. Welcome, everyone, to the NCAA Tournament in Phoenix, Arizona, and the Sweet 16. With an SEC Big East matchup as the seventh seeded Florida Gators take on the third seeded Marquette Golden Eagles. The winner will go to the Elite Eight and take on the Louisville Cardinals. Hi again, everyone, alongside Lenny Elmore and Reggie Miller. Kevin Harlan, thank you so much for joining us for our second game here in Phoenix tonight. Reggie, some storylines for you. Well, Marquette is 14 and 2 when they hold their opponents under 40% from the field, but more pressing, they've got to run these Gators off the three-point line. Well, the Gators are a guard-oriented offense, five starters and double figures. They make almost 10 threes per game, so you expect bombs away. And for Marquette, Lenny, who you got circled? Who you gonna watch? Well, a guy that is the Big East player of the year, you can't define him by position, and that's Jay Crowder, because he does it all. You take a look at those eye-popping numbers in the tournament, all they do is demonstrate he's the toughest matchup in the tourney field. When we talked about Florida and the threes, they led the nation with 342 threes made. Now on the season, the 38% from beyond the arc, but in the tourney, only 27%. They've got to knock down threes to go against that Marquette side. It's the seventh seeded Gators and the third seeded Golden Eagles from Phoenix. Sweet 16 matchup, Florida Marquette as we bring in Marty Schneider. Well, Kevin, Florida certainly happy to be back in the Sweet 16, but it's last year's Elite Eight game against Butler that Billy Donovan doesn't want his team to forget. It's a game we all did, and in the last eight minutes, according to Donovan, his team absolutely fell apart. They quit hustling, they quit going after 50-50 balls, and they quit going after rebounds. This year, before they even got on the court, before they touched the basketball, Billy Donovan made his team watch the last eight minutes of that game from last year's Elite Eight. He started the year off with it. He also started this week off with it. He made his team watch it again to remind them it's the hustle plays that win or lose the game here in the NCAA tournament. Kevin. Marty, thank you very much. Let's now take a look at our lineups. Gators come in 25 and 10. They were second place team in the Southeastern Conference at 10 and 6. And here's who they've got. Walker, Boynton, and Beal are terrific. Beal, one of the most talked about freshmen in college basketball. You see Junior Cadugan, he kind of makes things go for Marquette. But it's Jay Crowder who won the Big East Player of the Year. Billy Donovan, his sixth Sweet 16. He is 5-1. Longest tenured head coach in the SEC. And Buzz Williams. Is in his fourth season. One time assistant under Tom Green, a one time head coach at New Orleans back in 06 07. Animated in his 27 and 17, reflecting his terrific personality. Teddy Valentine, who has been a part of four national championship games, Randall McCall, a part of three Final Fours, and Mike Reed, now in his seventh NCAA tournament, officiating our game tonight. The Gators have won three of their. Last four after losing three straight to build momentum coming in in their second consecutive Sweet 16. Marquette finishing 14 and four Len in the Big East, a second place finish undefeated at home in Big East play, their second consecutive Sweet 16. Yeah, and this is a team again that gets out, they'll scramble you. You know, they like the pressure and get out in the passing lanes and love to run in transition. And the follow-up what Marty was saying about Florida and Billy Donovan and watching that Butler tape. Having said everything, they still lost that game in overtime and had a chance to win it. You saw that shot there by Walker. So, yeah, there was a lot of little things that they didn't do right, but this is a team can find themselves in that same position if they do all the right things. Billy Donovan's team, the number one three-point shooting team in college basketball. They hit 10 threes on average a game. Outside, it's Eric Murphy with a three. Retrieved by Beal, who loses it to Crowder in our first possession for the Golden Eagles. So you're going to see a common theme. Bradley Beal in there with the trees rebounding. He's an excellent rebounding guard at that 6-3 frame. And it's Jay Crowder. Rebounds inch down, and Jamel Wilson looking for the ball. Off of four. You take a look at what this 
Golden Eagle team is all about in terms of their numbers and how they got here. Well, again, the conference record 14 and 4 in the Big East came as a surprise to a lot of people, but they were able to defend their home court and really pick up some big wins on the road. That's a three point try by Darius Johnson Odom. An offensive rebound collected inside, and up and down it goes. Jamil Wilson is a sophomore from Racine, Wisconsin. And the other way, Klein. Horton had it rejected inside, and the other way, Crowder, the early release. And two from Arquette. What a nice block there by Wilson, the last line of defense for Marquette. He's one of the top shot blockers in the Big East. Number one on the Golden Eagles is Jamil Wilson. Motion shot there by Eric Murphy will not go. Marquette wants to get out of the open court. They've got the athletes to run. Wilson bobbles the ball. Kadugan comes up with it, works on Beal. Nice knockaway right there by Kenny Boynton in a foot race. Oh, nice. With a Beal feed. Nice score right there by Bradley Beal. And you can see Kenny Boynton on that play. He was stopped, but he was recognizing who was running with him. Seven consecutive NCAA appearances for Marquette. It's Wilson. A fatal and that goes over Patrick Young. And transition. This is what you want. You want guys to run with you. Now look at Boynton. He looks right behind and sees that Beal's with him. And that's a little dish over his shoulder. Yeah, good court awareness by Kenny Boynton on that one. Johnson Odom and Crowder, the highest scoring tandem in the Big East. Johnson Odom has it right now. Wilson setting a screen. Switch on defense. Here's a three. Darius Johnson Odom, a senior from Raleigh, North Carolina. Yeah, better known as DJO. You cannot give him any daylight, whether it's off the screens or in a one-on-one -on -one situation. The lefty will light it up. Here's Beal. And a shove and a foul. Looked like Vander Blue got caught up right there, and he picks up his first personal foul. And Reggie, the numbers on the Gators out of the Southeastern Conference. Yeah, and no one really expected them to be in the position they are, but they had a huge loss in Will You Get, who went down with the, the foot injury and has been lost for the season, but other guys have really stepped up. Broken foot for You Get. He really was the, you know, the, the guy that would get that defense, especially full court defense, started. Right, because he was the head of the snake on that full court press by Billy Donovan. Irving goes inside with the feed to Young. Outside Beal a three. Murphy with a nice rebound inside the sophomore from Kingston, Rhode Island. He got tangled up and a foul with Jamil Wilson getting in there and crowding it in 17-13 seven thir to play in the first half. Kadugan was reaching in. Kadugan picks up his first. And that's where Marquette is very vulnerable on the glass smallest team they scramble a lot but they leave you openings walker they're a great penetrating team is for we talked about their three-point shooting but they can take it inside a lot of times just as effectively well a lot of times they drive to kick it back out because of that three-point shooting that they possess but walker's one of the best even at 5 8 of getting into the paint and making things uh -oh. happen <laughs> i think that touched the top it will it not is, count yeah, it will not count well actually hit when it hit the apparatus That was some kind of shot by Darius Johnson Odom. Yeah, it went over the top. It's back. <laughs> Look apparatus. at the English. Had it just hit the top, that would have been good. Johnson Odom, a first team, all Big East selection, as was Crowder, in addition to being player of the year in the conference. Here's a look at Jake Crowder from Villa Rica, Georgia. He's a high school quarterback in Georgia. Pointing outside, Eric Murphy. Rebound by Finger Blue. Comes from the state of Wisconsin, Madison Memorial High School. Oh, nice nice play play. Feed. Wilson gets it, puts it up and in. Oh, Wilson's got four. Kadugan with the assist. What a nice draw. Drew all the defenders to him and understood that Wilson was underneath wide open. But Murphy coming up short on a couple of wide open threes. He's got to get some leg into it. We know he can shoot it. One the other way. Murphy so far has started 0 4 for the Gators. We well, take a look at Junior Kadugan right there. All he does is get in the paint and force the defender to make a choice. And right there, Irving made the wrong choice. Todd Mayo is going to check in for Marquette. Derek Wilson comes in the contest for the Golden Eagles. Tell you what, to play for Marquette and you're a guard, you must be able to have to do 200 push-ups <laughs> before signing <laughs> with the Golden Eagles. All these guards. 
Uh, body beautiful. Talk about the conditioning of the team. Wow. It's something that's stressed right from the very beginning of the season. Yeah, recognizing the pace at which they play. Buzz Williams knows that his guys have to be in shape, and that's a prime directive. Get in shape first. Walker goes back to Beal. See how they make the And then outside, a long shot by Casey Prather, who checks in for the Gators. Out of bounds. And we'll take a break at 15.34 to play in the first. All right, great. We've already had one number one fall tonight, Michigan State. Syracuse surviving by a point winning. First one in Boston. There's an interception. Beal throwing out of Irving Walker. Wilbekin. Nice ball rotation. Murphy thought about it. He started 0 4, as we mentioned. Bradley Beal. And Murphy, you can't get gun shy now. That was a wide open three. That's your game. Todd Mayo is checked in for the Golden Eagles. Crowder is defending the little guard. Walker. The column is switchable, a 6 6 switchable because. This uh, Crowder can play little guys. He can defend big guys. He doesn't care as long as he can defend. Well, that's what I said. You can't define him by position. <laughs> yeah. We just call him a basketball player. Yeah, that's the luxury that Buzz Williams has, especially with a lot of these guys out here. You can switch, pick, and roll, and, and you've got Crowder who can guard a 5'8 Irving Walker. That's a luxury to have as a head coach. Crowder just picked up his first personal foul. Here is 81% free throw shooter Irving Walker, senior from Brooklyn, New York. And you can see by his numbers, a prolific player for the time he's been at Florida, uh, despite his diminutive size. One thing about the Gators, they can score all five starters average double figures. Take a look at the pressure right now by Florida. You know the adage that a team that presses doesn't like to be pressed. They've already turned it over once. Crowder, Cadugan, Boynton is on him. Wilbekin is watching Johnson Odom. Mayo is defended by Beal with the deflection right there and picked up by Boynton. We go about that pressure again by Florida. Beal with a three. Bradley Beal, the freshman from Chaminade Prep in St. Louis. As we talked about at the top, that Florida was going to have to create offense with their defense. Beal's got five, Cadugan sifting through traffic. And out of bounds it goes with 14.28 to play and see real stories of human achievement featured on the Buick Human Highlight Reel at NCAA.com slash Buick. Now Florida comes in with the size of Patrick Young. Boy, is he built. Body beautiful. That's my nickname for him. Now what can he do with that body? Cadogan takes it down the boulevard. There's a whistle. There's an offensive foul. Love the activity by the Florida Gators here in this first half. Mike Rosario is in. Cadogan picks up his second personal foul. So that is a story for Buzz Williams right now. Yeah, that's going to be somewhat of an issue. Junior Cadogan is Z point guard. Although Buzz Williams has got a couple of guys very capable of running the show out there. Uh, if it's not Wilson, then they're going to move Vander Blue over to that point guard position, which they've done. Right now, Rosario to the rack, takes it up and in. Mike Rosario puts it through the transfer from Rutgers. And you wonder where the help was. The help, the head was buried into their men instead of seeing man ball. Mayo throws it inside for Crowder. Got it to go with a foul called on the play as Eric Murphy was defending. Crowder averages about 17 points a game, and the foul goes on Murphy for the first time. Well, Jay Crowder, we told you. He plays anywhere, gets it done anywhere. Look at him flex right here. Using that upper body strength despite Murphy strafing him on the arm. Gets him up in the air, gets the ball, and Crowder still capable of getting on the glass. This is, Reggie, the number one offense in the Big East in terms of points and shooting. This is going to be an important matchup for Eric Murphy because I don't think he has the foot speed to stay with a Jay Crowder. And that's something that Billy Donovan is going to have to address. I know they have brought in... Prather, I, I would like to see Casey Prather on Crowder as opposed to Murphy. Good pick off by Crowder. Oh, here comes Wilson. Johnson Odom for three. Good! Darius Johnson Odom. From Sinks anywhere. The triple. He's got six. Any place, any time. <laughs> he is not bashful. You call him DJO? He's the deep. He 
is the leading scorer for Mark Evans, 18 points a game. Wilbekin, sophomore from Gainesville. Prather. Patrick Young. Point tapped and fouled. Count it for three. He'll go to the line. He was fouled by Darius Johnson Odom. And if you're Johnson Odom, you've got to close out quicker to Boynton. Further with a nice pass over, but you can't allow him to get his feet set. You've got to run him off that three-point line. That's a good call there by the official. The contact yeah. happened down low. And the ball was in the middle of the floor, so there was no need to get buried right. in the paint for help. Boynton hits it. That's his sixth four-point play of the season. Got him. Johnson Odom, there's a football pass. Jamal Wilson couldn't convert. Boy, he was right there on the doorstep. Rosario, surprised how open he is, takes it into a thicket. That's a tie-up because of a good lunge inside by Jay Crowder. Well, I'll tell you what, Darius Johnson Odom pulled a string to get open. And here he throws a perfect pass. You know, it's okay. You don't always have to be on top 10 on ESPN. You can easily just lay it in. Crowder's going to check out. Now they change their look, does Marquette. They bring in big 6 8 sophomore Devontae Gardner, who missed some time with an injury, eight games. The Golden Eagles had to kind of reinvent themselves in just a bit. Now he comes in with the big man inside. Yeah, it changes the look a little bit in the half court. As Gardner's a big load. Down low, third leading score. Getting in the way of that was Patrick Young out of bounds. It does. Get the latest gear for your team at the official store of the NCAA. Find great hoops merchandise at NCAA.com slash shop. It's interesting listening to Darius Johnson Odom. He says, when we go down low to Gardner, he commands a double team. It's interesting to see if they do that with the, the bigger Patrick Young guarding them. Pointing out to Prather. Marquette's turned the ball over six times early in this game. Young. Good nice. feed. Rosario puts it up and in. And a little 6 nothing run here for the Gators. I tell you what, going four guards has given a great deal of mobility to Florida. And a nice pass there by Patrick Young along the baseline. Mike Rosario known for shooting the three. But each time he's gotten the ball, he's been assertive going to the basket. Here comes Jake Crowder. There goes Jamil Wilson out for the Golden Eagles, who had 14 Big East wins. That was a Marquette school record in conference play. Cadogan trying to fight through traffic and spells it and fouled on the play. And Prather will pick up his first. Casey is a sophomore from Jackson, Tennessee. And Billy Donovan, he is going to extend this pressure full court. He feels that he can turn over Marquette. Kadugan, you have to be very careful with the basketball here. Kadugan's got it. Charles Williams, as coach says, we are on the same wavelength. He is such an extension to me on the floor. I don't know where we'd be without him at the point. Gardner trying to set a screen. Kadugan with the shot clock down to nine and 12 to play in the first. A long three. Rebound yanked by Irving Walker. Bill Rosario loading up and fanning with the Mayo rebound for Marquette. Well, a pretty good look in transition. Bill Rosario, you got to be able to knock that down. But if you're Billy Donovan, you'll take it. Shifty moves inside by Darius Johnson Odom. Boy, he shifted gear. He's got eight points. And he's got a variety of ways that he can get to the basket. We saw a supreme jump shot. But he also puts it on the floor. Again, another guy with upper body strength able to take the bumps and still finish. Gator shooting 40%. Beal 2 of 3. Ross Crowder looking for Rosario. Out of bounds and a turnover for the Gators. 17-17 in this sweet 16 game. Back in Phoenix, Arizona, time now for the Power Age sideline report as we swing it over to Marty Snyder. Well, Kevin, yesterday I would say Marquette's practice was very loose. In fact, in the last 15 minutes, the guys were just fooling around, shooting half-court shots. And as Reggie Miller will tell you, our cameras are always rolling. This is Coach Buzz Williams. You see him highlighted right there. And Buzz from half-court on his second attempt, 
and it's good, believe it or not. Now, here's what I want to see. Check out the celebration. He told me he was diving into the pool and taking a little swim because that was splashdown. Reg, how come you never celebrated like that? How come you never celebrated like that when you made a three, Reg? I don't know if I could get down that low, Marty. That's the problem. <laughs> He's a loose guy. There's no doubt about that. Always loses his voice and has a cup of honey and a teaspoon right by the bench that he is constantly eating or drinking. Or whatever you do with honey, that's what he does to kind of coat that throat head, which is always sore. Under 11 to play here in the first half. This is Crowder, a long three, picked up by Murphy. Florida with 20-plus wins for 14 consecutive season. Orchestrated by coach Billy Donovan, now in his 16th year in Gainesville. Field, point. A three from Burton. Murphy got a hand on it, as did Crowder. That's off of the Golden Eagles. So we take a look at Bradley Beal again, a guy who also has pretty significant numbers. Double double is what he's averaging in the tournament. And with that frame, strong body, long arms, the ability to knock down shots. He was the Gatorade National High School Player of the Year from St. Louis. Another great Gator came from there. David Lee, same high school, knocked away beautifully inside. Cadogan. Oh, Beal, the guy we just talking about. Flying high, swatting the ball away. And that's what you talk about, not giving up on the play. Beal running in transition. You can think he has a wide open layup, and Beal out of nowhere with the rejection. And what length for a guard right there. 6'3, 6'4 is second on this team in rebounding. All SEC as a freshman. As a freshman, yep. He really made a splash for this program. Darius Johnson Odom inside Devontae Gardner. Got his own miss and puts it back up and in for his first two tonight. And that gives Marquette a, a dimension that, quite honestly, Florida doesn't have. Patrick Young, big guy in the middle, but he doesn't have the moves inside. Devontae Gardner makes you have to guard him because he's got moves inside and he's big and strong. I'll tell you what, there's no way that Murphy's going to be able to guard Gardner down low, one on one. Robekin is back in outside. He feeds to Kenny Boynton. Murphy, a three. Beal pushing off and a foul, and he was shoved beforehand by Jay Crowder. That's two fouls on Crowder. It sure is. He picks up his second. They got two on Cadugan. And coming up in the AT&T at the half, Greg Gumbel, Greg Anthony, Kenny, the Jet Smith, and Charles Barkley will take you out for a live look at Cincinnati against the Buckeyes in a Sweet 16 game on CBS. They'll have the latest NCAA tournament news, plus an A. Smith watch presented by AT&T. That's all coming up on the AT&T at the half. And now if you're Buzz Williams, you just take out Crowder. There's a little over nine minutes left. Walker missing the shot off of Murphy. He goes flying in there. And out of bounds it goes. And so a turnover right there for the Florida Gators. I know you can't sit him for the rest of the half. He's too active. He's too important to your team. But he's going to have to play smart as a senior. Right. Buzz Williams is going to manage his time. Probably, you know, kind of spoon feed him some minutes with the hope that he doesn't get in foul trouble. Two minutes here, two minutes there. Outer back in with the two fouls. And here comes Kadugan from Toronto, the other way. He's a junior. Johnson Odom. Got it trying to dig it out. Murphy getting gutty with oh, it. Man, pretty play by Devontae Gardner. Gardner. You better believe it. Number nine to play in the first half. Crowder wheeling inside. Knocked away by Peel in a foul. Boy. Johnson Odom's been terrific so far. Eight points for the Golden Eagles. Yeah, he got it going with his jump shot. Talked about all Big East player along with Crowder. He got it to stretch the floor with that three-point shooting. Beal just picked up his first personal foul. Here is Crowder at the line. Great recruiting story for him. He didn't get a lot of D1 offers, so he went to Hutchinson Junior College in Kansas. Buzz Williams made the trip out there from Milwaukee, and in the game that he was going to recruit and scout Crowder, he only played nine minutes because he got in all kinds of foul problems. So he watched him on the bench, and he was so impressed the way he remained in the game, stay engaged, and with campus unseen by Crowder, the scholarship was offered, Crowder accepted, and the rest is history. And now you're a big East player of the year, but 
he fits right into what Buzz Williams wants. Think about some of the players that Buzz has had. Wes Matthews, Jimmy Butler, who's with his top. These are all guys at that 6'4", 6'5", 6'6", range that can play one through four, one through five on his team. Here's Prather, goes right by Gardner with a little mid-range shot and puts it down. Casey Prather, who comes off a game of 14 points against UVA. Wow. In the round of 64, way outside, it won't go on the miss. Three rebound by Kenny Boynton. What a pace to this game. A little bit different than that Michigan State Louisville game. Mm -hmm. Both of these teams average about 76 points per game. They want to get up and down. Out of with a rebound from our captains his first tonight. And again, getting up and down emphasizes their advantages, particularly Marquette with their athletes out on the floor. Out of with a triple. Rebound by Kenny Boynton at 6 2. He collects his second rebound. Alley oop. Oh, Prather contorts in mid flight. Did that I say flight 24 is cleared for Ooh, landing. Woo, did, nice. I, did I say Florida had athletes too? <laughs> <laughs> Gracious. My goodness. Here's Todd Mayo. And that's why you want to get up and down, take advantage of all that. Nice slicing move inside by Vander Blue and the rebound by Wilberton. Right, He's got to be, be careful. careful. Right. <laughs> you don't want to bring him up cheap and light, bro. Wilberton puts in a three. His defense has been important. Wilberton has now made 11 of his last 18 three-point shots. Everyone always talks about the Marquette athletes. I think Florida is like, don't forget about us. Boynton to Prather right there in transition. Look how he contorts his body sideways, catches it, and squares up with the rim. Nice finish there by the young fella. And remember, Prather was battling the flu against Norfolk State in the round of 32, but he says now he's 100% and he's completely rid himself of that. When you get a couple of plays like that, that's the elixir that makes you feel a lot better. Yeah, find out what that is. Approaching second to play here in the first half. The winner will take on Louisville, who took care of number one seed Michigan State. Here in Phoenix in game one, Kadugan finds Wilson for three. The 6 7 Wilson, an undersized center, puts it down. He's. Got a basket right there. He averages seven a game. He's got seven already. And with both Gardner and Wilson in the game, Marquette has gone probably as big as they can go. Looking you're, to do a better job off the glass. You're right. Science is a precious commodity at Marquette. And we said spoon feed minutes to Jay Crowder with two fouls. He's had a couple on the bench. He'll probably see a couple more before this half is over. Will begin inside the young. Shot by Gardner is going to pick up the foul. He's only back about 80% from that knee injury, but they need him. He just picked up his first personal. We're back in Phoenix, and you take a look at the game summer. There's a one-point difference. Ford on top of Marquette by one point. And the difference is one more made free throw. You can see both have gone 9 and 22 from the field. Both have hit three three-point shots. And here is the free throw shooter, Patrick Young. And all new Conan O'Brien is a slam dunk. And don't miss any of it. Conan, all new Monday at 11 Eastern, 10 Central on TBS. Gardner picked up the foul, and that's why Young is at the line for the Gators. That's the first on him. Now, how do you handle this full court pressure by the Gators? Marquette's got more than enough ball handlers. The question is whether they attack it like they need to, and there you go. Oh, man, what a block shot there, buddy. Vander Blue the is the one to put it in on the missed shot by Kadugan, who's playing with a couple of fouls. Blue with his first two points of the game. Approaching six to play here in the first half. Good screen by Young. Frees up Beal. Now drawing the double. Here's Rosario. Wheeling around. Prather. And picked up by Vander Blue. 
into Wilkerson, held, and the foul. With 5.43 to play in the first half. Well, we emphasize the athletes on the floor, and that Florida's got some. Nice job there. Look at Prather. We talked about his alley-oop finish. Now the block shot with the left hand in transition. But Marquette never gave up on it. And in a game like this where you know guys are going to get up and get a piece of the ball, you want to be sure you're in the right place at the right time. So you can't concede anything. Prather picks up his second personal foul for the Gators. And the discussion, I think, now maybe on a substitution. As you look at Billy Donovan, only Adolph Rupp owns a better winning percentage through 500 games at an SEC school. Two national championships, three final fours for Billy D. What back-to-back -back national championships mm -hmm. in this era? How hard is that to do? Johnson Odom. Rebound by Young. Johnson Odom is that's the third rebound for Young. Eight points for Darius. Walker wheeling. Rosario an open triple. And Darius Johnson Odom back again. Racing the other way. Fander Blue. Rebound by Murphy. Well, it looks are there for both teams. Absolutely. Yeah. Wide open. I'd like to see Murphy get going. Irving Walker. Tell you what, it's such a lull without Crowder on the floor for the Golden Eagles. Now with those two fouls, Buzz Williams doesn't want to risk him picking up that third mm -hmm. in this first half. I still believe he might get a couple more minutes down the stretch. Again, spoon feed him the minutes. Try to keep him out of a rhythm that ultimately creates a foul situation. Gardner and into Wilson. And a shove. Well, we've had some individual performances worth watching, of course, as the foul just went on. Cadugan for the third time. That is a story. Fair and Scoop Jardine for Syracuse. Bahannon and Jang with those seven blocks was such a force for the Cardinals in that win. And yeah, you're probably saying, why is Jang in there with only five points? It was those seven block shots of just really manning up that, that lane for the Cardinals. He set a single season record and he passed Purvis Ellison with all those blocks. He now has 123 for the season. Yeah, well, he certainly is a guy that understands the game. When you can block that many shots, especially as a secondary defender, that means you're reading the plays and you're getting the help nicely. But how about Shane Bahannon? 15 points all in the second half. He was scoreless at the beginning of the half. Irving Walker at the free throw line. He has kind of had a different role this season. He has become almost more of a facilitator than in the past. Um, and he's he's obviously accepted that role well for a team that, that needed that kind of role to be played. Well, I mean, when you're a guy like Irvin Walker and you know, you've got prolific scoring behind you, everybody's game planning for you. And so from that standpoint, you know, you've got to be able to be the decoy and make other guys better. It's, it's what has allowed Beal to be successful on this team as a freshman because someone had to let down their guard offensively, and it was Walker. Blue with Rosario right there, four and a half to play here in the first half. The winner will take on Louisville to beat top seed Michigan State. Good entry feed into Devontae Gardner. Another offensive rebound for him, knocked away by Rosario. They can't save it for the Gators with some nice hustle there by Mike Rosario. Marty? We well, talk about Irving Walker, and when I asked Billy Donovan about that, about the change he would have to make this year, he said he was never once worried about what Irving would say about it. He went to him, he said, Coach, I'll do whatever I need to do to make our team better. If it means scoring less, distributing the ball more, I'll do that. He's not necessarily a vocal leader, but he'll do whatever it takes to win on the court. He is the number one all-time Florida Gator assist leader, number two all-time in three-pointers. You know, just looking at Devontae Garter, he, he is not 100% back from that left knee injury. Yeah, he's got it, no lift. No lift. His gait looks off somewhat. He can't, he can't get up. It, it's, it's, yeah, I'm sure it's frustrating to him. You know, he was taking the place of Chris Atule, who was injured early in the season. He started the season as the center at 6'11". He was injured. Gardner comes in. He was injured. They had to shift on the flight. There's a good-looking shot by Todd Mayo. And if that last name rings a bell, the younger brother 
of O.J. Mayo, who played at USC. And we saw Chris Smith in that earlier game, his brother J.R. Smith for the Knicks, and now we have Todd Mayo. Younger brothers doing work this evening. Look at him run. Blue to the rack and a foul for the Gators. Under four to play in the first half from Phoenix. Now you take a look at the four number ones. Michigan State losing here earlier to Louisville. Tomorrow we got Kentucky against Indiana. Rematch of an earlier game where Indiana won at the buzzer in Bloomington. Syracuse has defeated fourth seeded Wisconsin by a point. Jordan Taylor in a last second try there for the Badgers. And tomorrow. North Carolina will take on Ohio. Point guard Kendall Marshall had the cast taken off today. There is every indication coming from the North Carolina camp that he will not play tomorrow. Here is Vander Blue at the free throw line for the Golden Eagles. This year, enjoy more madness with Coke Zero. Text 2013 to 2653 for a chance to win a trip to next year's 2013 NCAA Men's Final Four. That's a lot of numbers. But we got a good audience out there. And Kevin, just a word on Kendall Marshall in Carolina. He is the one player who I think is totally indispensable to his team. You might say Anthony Davis for Kentucky, but his absence changes that Carolina look. Beal just puts in a three, hitting from outside. He's got eight. As we went to break, Eric Murphy picked up his second foul for the Gators. We have three and a half to play in the half here in the second game of the Sweet 16 in Phoenix. If you're Buzz Williams and you're going to go to that three-quarter trap, you got to understand you've got to get to shooters. Florida always has two or three shooters on the floor at the time. We've had six ties and six lead changes. No lead has been greater than five in this first half. It's been fun to watch. Outside point. Rebound wrestled inside by Jamil Wilson. Three to play. Mayo from Huntington, West Virginia. Blue trying to get a Gardner screen. And the subsequent drive and the tap in by Gardner won't go. Yeah, the, the offense, you can tell, is not running the same way when Kajugan's not on the floor. Two fouls to Kajugan, two fouls to Crowley. Patrick Young with a nice dunk inside. He's got three. I'm surprised Devontae Gardner trying to dance around and get in front of Patrick Young. Got caught in that rotation. Why not play right behind him? Patrick Young. As athletic as he is, he's still raw down in the paint. Doesn't have a lot of offensive moves as a post guy. Yeah, make him earn it. Mayo. Gardner, the screen opens up the shot. Rebound by Wilbekin. And then it goes to Boynton. What a rejection. My goodness. I'll count it. Goaltending. It'll count for two. The Gators up by four. The sixth point for Boynton. Well, you take a look. Miscommunication as Gardner goes around in front. And they find Young, and here on the block, it yeah, definitely hits the board. Great call. Hits the board first. The officials right on the spot. Raiders a little seven at the run here right before halftime. Yeah, they're forcing Marquette to shoot the ball from the outside, and that really good penetration is just there. Puck screwed inside by Mayo, picked up by Rosario. And when they have taken shots and missed, Florida now not allowing a second chance opportunity that Marquette thrived on earlier. Wilbergen saw the mismatch on Wilson, finds Young. Rebound curdled inside by Wilson. He's got four rebounds. Yeah, sometimes you just got to throw it to the rim, but if you're young, you got to come down with that. You've got the size advantage down low. You got to use it to your advantage. Yeah, that was kind of a finesse game, right? Guys who are built like they can be rugged and stand the stand the contact. And I'm looking at Young, he reminds me of a taller version of a Ben Wallace. Virginia Union grab. Shot clock at six. Again, another another perimeter, perimeter. another perimeter shot. Marquette has missed 17 of the last 21 shots, trailing now by four. been a good night so far for the Big East. Syracuse getting their first Elite Eight since 2003. Cincinnati and the Buckeyes are playing over 
on CBS. You can watch that. And finish your night with the second half of Florida and Marquette. 58 seconds to play here in the first half of basketball. Well, the Big East eliminating two Big Ten teams. And when the debate continues, that's certainly some fodder for Big East aficionados who say that their, their conference is stronger. Raiders on a 7 0 run. Not that that was solving. No. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a you know, one and done situation. Peel is back in. Out to Walker. Defended by Derek Wilson. A nicely laid up. Knowing that Gardner has no elevation, Peel just took it right to him, laid it up high on the window. Peel's got 10. Gators have their biggest lead. Look at the wingspan on Bill. He might be 6'3, 6'4, but he <laughs> plays <laughs> about 7'1. <laughs> Second difference, game clock and shot clock winding down in the first half. This is Derek Wilson, a freshman from Anchorage, Alaska, the backup point guard. He doesn't turn the ball over. He's been very steady. And a quick lunge right there. And a foul goes on Walker, who picks up his first personal foul for the Florida Gators. One to give. Now they're going to bring Crowder off the bench. Also, they're going to bring off Junior Kadugan. A couple guys with some foul issues. Kadugan's got three. Crowder's got two fouls. Yeah, you got to be careful. Can't pick up a, a cheap offensive foul or over the back if there's a missed shot if you're Crowder or Kadugan. Well, the expectation is these guys are veterans. They know better. Shot clock is off. Screen by Wilson. Kadugan diving inside. Will begin with a bit of a shove. 2.3 to play. Foul goes on Patrick Young. And this is smart by Buzz Williams. You're playing offense for defense. Now you probably get Crowder out with those two fouls. to do get that the free throw line. So after these two, you get them both out so they don't pick up a cheap third. Young picks up his first personal foul. One thing about Marquette, they've been pretty resilient this year. They've had second half rallies in six games where they've gone on to win so no deficit for them seems to really um, stick in their craw they, and, they usually get back and their style really uh, serves them well as far as coming back being able to climb the mountaintop as they'll create turnovers and they get on a run two missed free throws though that hurt so they got the loose ball that's it but florida does in that first half coach billy donovan watches this gators Going to nine, nothing run over the last 3.53 of the half. Beal, only player for the Gators in double figures with 10. And the Marquette Golden Eagles have got eight from Darius Johnson Odom and over to Marty Snyder. Well, Billy, such a tight game. How were you guys able to make that run there at the end of the half? Well, you know, I, I think offensively we've had some good looks. We haven't made some shots, and then we've made some poor decisions. But, uh, you know, the biggest thing was they missed some shots as well, which allowed us to get out on the break, and then we're able to score. But obviously when Crowder's out of the game, it changes their team, and he's obviously a terrific player. All right, thanks, Billy. Thank you. Kev? All right, Marty, thank you. Six points is equaling the biggest lead of the game for Florida on top at halftime. We're going to send you to the AT&T at the half after these messages. You're watching the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. Welcome back to Phoenix. The winner here will take on Louisville. 36-30 is our halftime score. Kevin Harlan alongside Lenny Elmore and Reggie Miller. Only one player in double figures so far. That's Bradley Beal, the freshman for the Gators. Well, if this is his first NCAA tournament, you could have fooled me. I mean, he's come out here, played as coolly and as calmly as you'd expect a veteran. Four or five from the field, including two of three from beyond the arc. Ten points, four rebounds. He's got two assists. And he's got the game coming to him easily. And the Golden Eagles on the season shot 46% as a team, but... You've seen all the bricks in that first half, only 31%, and I agree with Sir Charles Barkley. Jay Crowder has to be the best player on the floor in this second half. Well, Crowder, in the last 13.57, no field goals and one single point. As you take a look at some of our numbers through the first 20 minutes of basketball here in Phoenix, Arizona. Well, a saving grace for Marquette has been their tenacity on the boards. Nine offensive rebounds, 13 second chance points to just two for Florida, and also four of 10 from beyond the arc. Without that, they'd be buried. 
Yeah, chance of talking with Billy Donovan in the back, and he's going to try to get Eric Murphy going a little bit. He's had some wide open looks in that first half. Irving Walker on the floor. Boynton's got the ball. Patrick is out there along with Murphy. There's Beal. That's the Gator 5 Beal to Murphy. Nice rejection inside recorded by Jamil Wilson. Racing the other way is Darius Johnson Odom. And you've got to be impressed when you see Marquette flying down the floor. They drive hard, man. You look at their faces. They are determined. So Johnson Odom is out there. Wilson, Crowder, Kadugan. Along with Vander Blue, that's the Golden Eagle five and a missed shot outside by Eric Murphy. Well, two possessions, two shots for Murphy. That's exactly what Donovan said he was going to try to do. Crowder gets his miss. Blue trying to clean it up. Murphy in there gobbling up the rebound. He's collected four. And the other way racing is Walker. Beal thought about three. He got Kadugan in the air. And down goes Beal. You see Wilson holding his head a little bit. That was a hard pass to the face of Wilson, but nice little pump fake here by Bill, just taking the contact to pick up the foul. Huge story now. The point guard, Kadugan, with four personals, he is gone. Yeah, and he's a guy that runs the show for Marquette, particularly in their half court offense. You know, when they get out in transition, they got any number of guys that can lead them. But in the half court, and if Florida wants to slow this down and make it a half court game, Marquette. Maybe lacking their leader. Yeah, but Florida is not going to slow this game down. How about how about there's a problem with the clock right now? How about Kadugan, Ridge? No points, four fouls now, three turnovers at the point guard. So if you're Buzz Williams, you brought in Mayo, the freshman, but you also have Derek Wilson on your bench, the normal backup point guard to Kadugan. But you're right, Lynn. This is a setback for the Golden Eagles of Marquette with their floor general on the bench with four fouls. And as I said, I don't know if it hurts them in transition because they got a lot of guys that can lead it. But in a half court situation like this, if Florida forces Marquette to play in half court, Marquette's at a disadvantage. Murphy land a little bit of wood there on the screen on the wing. And Kenny drives up a high screen. Beal looking inside. Young, good move. Nice fake, and he got Wilson up in the air, and he's got five. See how he gathered himself? He didn't rush. Came to a two-foot jump shot and then went up powerful to the rim. Crowder is two of seven. They win the game one of three. Johnson Odom is four of nine, so he's really been the only guy that's been hit. And this is the kind of half-court situation that I think the loss of Kadugan has impact on Marquette adversely. Well, we talked about Patrick Young slowing down down low. As the ball comes in, he takes his time. We're in the game of college and as well as pro, the, the lost art of big men in the jump shot is almost extinct. That was a good move there by Young to gather his feet. Young just picked up his second personal foul. And here comes Sander Blue. Mayo. Wilson with a nice screen, knocking out Walker. Jamil Wilson backing his way in to Young. Murphy with the rebound. Fifth. Poynton, Young, and the Gators set. Gators average 10 made threes a game. They've got four so far. Yeah, they like to put them up. There's no question about it. Marquette, though, playing very tightly, not giving them open opportunity. And if you're not going to get the open opportunity and your defender's going to play you belly to belly, that's exactly what you do. Put it on the floor and force them to guard you going to the rack. Wheels got 12. I don't think I would say this, but there is a freshman on the floor that is the best player. We thought it was going to be Jay Crowder, but it's been Bradley Beal. Three minutes now gone here in the second half. You get no argument from me. Beal playing like a savvy veteran out there. Crowder trying to force the issue. Oh, the he grabbed it. Yep, right. You're right. Grab the net. Eight points now for Crowder. The NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Championship continues Saturday on ESPN with regional semifinal action as Tennessee will take on the Kansas Jayhawks. Coverage begins at noon Eastern. For more information on the Women's Championship, go to NCAA.com. The game began 
like a track meet. But has settled now into this kind of rhythm. What a half court ball. Boynton with the drive and the floater. Patrick Young chiseling through room and he could not get it to go and it was picked up by Blue and here comes Marquette the other way. Todd Mayo. Rebound point. He'll push the pedal to the metal and find Beal. Well, it's all about either turnovers or quick shots. That's what leads to transition up and down. And when Florida and Marquette kind of string those together, that's when we see the track meet. Point. Walker, a long triple and picked up inside by Janelle Wilson. He's got five rebounds for the Golden Eagles. And Florida State, uh, excuse me, Florida does a good job of driving and replace. Especially with all those shooters. Boyton, Walker, Beal. And shooting so far. Two of seven for each team in the second half. Thus far, firing from the field. Wow, bad shooting mm. all afternoon between that first game as well. 15-33 to play in the second half for the chance to go to the Elite Eight. Double-digit deficits as you can see that the Golden Eagles have gone through and come back to win this season. So it is in their history, on their resume. They've only trailed tonight by as many as eight. But it's all in their style right now, the way they scramble you. They get you out of rhythm for extended periods of time, gives them a chance to get back in the ball games that they've gotten behind them. Trader is coming for the Gators. Shot clock at five. Murphy for three. Good! Puts it down. That's a three. He is one of eight. They've been waiting for him to go. He can shoot. Comes off the bench last season. A starter this year. And he's about to explode out of his skin on that one. Well, he wasn't the only one. Look at Billy Donovan. Well, he averaged 19 points a game in the Southeastern Conference tournament. So the guy was scoring, but tonight he's been really struggling. He's just given the Florida Gators their biggest lead. Mayo and Crowder. Johnson Odom. Wilson down low. The Dugans on the bench with four fouls, and Vander Blue, the fifth Golden Eagle on the floor, a turnover. Mm. Under 15 to play. Gators holding on to the 43-34 lead. Louisville won early on the Big East team. Right now we got Marquette still alive, but trailing. Cincinnati is losing right now to Ohio State. Syracuse has won. Big Ten's got a couple of teams. Big 12 with two. Number one seed, Michigan State losing. Early night here in Phoenix. With the ball is Irving Walker. Crowder is still on the floor. Crowder average in the first two games, 21 points. Here is Beal, puts in a three. Bradley Beal. Wacks one through, he's got three triples tonight. And to tell you how cohesive the Florida offense has been, that's the 17th field goal and the 13th assist on field goal. So they've been able to run their stuff. We talk about Marquette's defense being disruptive. Florida's found a way to be able to share the ball and find the open man. Is he pretty there? In the contest with Murphy and Beal and Boynton, along with Walker. That's the Gator 5. Watch every game on the road to the Final Four, live on your computer, iPad, iPhone, or select Android phones with NCA March Madness Live. Visit NCA.com slash March Madness for more information. And I agree exactly what Buzz Williams is doing right now. When you're in a one-and-done situation, Kadugan back on the floor with those four fouls. He understands the offense has become very stagnant here. Johnson Odom putting up the three. Rebound by Murphy. Ford is on a 19-4 run. Murphy grabs his seventh rebound. And they've also prevented Marquette from getting second chance opportunities. They had a ton of them in the first half. Murphy. Johnson Odom right there. Kadugan is watching the dribbling point. Ford has not turned the ball over in 10 minutes. Going back to late first half. Murphy, switch on defense. Devontae Gardner coming off the Buzz Williams bench. Shot clock is down to four. Murphy flying his way in for two. How about Murphy not settling there? Usually a stretch four, a pick and pop four. Puts the ball on the deck, gets to the rim. 21 four run timeout, Buzz Williams. The Golden Eagles are watching the sand go through that hourglass down by their largest deficit of 48-34.
It is by 14, TBS this May. Girls, girls, smack. Girls, basketball, girls. That's pretty much summing it up. Men at Work, a brand new comedy series. For the latest news, like us on Facebook. It's pretty good there, partner. Mm. Oh, you got that promo out. Mm. Why don't you guys read those things? <laughs> Wilbegin is checked in. Trather's out there. Murphy. Point remains in the contest. And Beal. Forward is five. Crowder out there. Johnson Oda. Cadugan will inbound with four fouls. Gets it off to Wilson. And Gardner, the fifth Golden Eagle. Handing his way into Murphy. Two points right there. Gardner's got four. I'll give Gardner a lot of credit because... It he has zero lift. He, he's playing out here, I would say, at 65 to 70 percent. Well, you can see him dragging yeah, that left that's leg. That's a gutsy effort for I mean, a guy that just you know, wants to experience the tournament. I mean, it's he's so gone. obvious that he's dragging that leg. For a sophomore, it's, it's tough. Now on the floor, here's Prather, followed by Wilson. Now Marquette, which had to play like this for a string of games with Gardner's injury. Smaller, but certainly fast. And point right back, Crowder to the rack. Mayo with the rebound. You gotta make these transition opportunities count. You're not gonna get many of them. Kadugan, Crater the rebound. And you're not gonna get it back all in one possession. Marquette 3 of 12, shooting in this second half of play. 5 of 11 shooting for the Gators in the second half. Prather, free to fire. Miss three, the Crowder rebound. Mayo. Into Prather, into the hole. Todd Mayo. Puts it in, and he's got five. I uh, like what Buzz Williams and the Golden Eagles are trying to do here, speed up the game. Which is how the game began, with a very good pace. Ten point game, the energetic Buzz Williams trying to rally the troops. Well, the top two seeds in the East have advanced to the Elite Eight, so it'll be Syracuse and Ohio State. We were in Pittsburgh last week, this crew was, so we got to see two games from the Buckeyes and two games from the Orange last week in Pittsburgh. Yeah, I think that game's going to be decided by rebounding, particularly offensive rebounding. If Syracuse is vulnerable, Ohio State gets on the glass hard. Deshaun Thomas, his ability to stretch the floor, and we know about that matchup 2-3 zone by Syracuse. And he continued to hit those outside shots. Gardner working inside on Young, and there is a foul, and Young will pick it up. That's the third on Patrick Young, and Gardner will be at the line. Well, you wonder if anybody's been watching and sizing Gardner up throughout this game. They know he can barely get off the ground. So why would you body up? If I'm Patrick Absolutely. Young, you know, I'll body up till he receives and then step back because I know that he's not going to get up high enough for me not to be able to bother the shot or even block the shot. Dante Gardner is out far from Suffolk, Virginia. Here comes Vander Blue in the contest. Murphy for the Gators. Kadugan will check out with the fourth foul, so they're really going to try to nurse his play with 11 and a half to play. You know, you think about the royalty of college basketball, Duke and Carolina and Kansas and Kentucky and some of those schools. Indiana probably is in that conversation too. They've been to 15 sweet 16s. You know, Marquette, this is their 15th sweet 16, as you see Jamil Wilson check back in the contest for Gardner. And sometimes you don't think of Marquette in those terms, but they're right there with, with Indiana for instance. Well, you know, you think back to Al McGuire. Yep, exactly. You know, Marquette, mini dynasty finalist, won a national finalist in 74, won a national championship a couple of years later. There's a timeout. It's taken by Florida. They lead 48-39. Uh, inside March Madness presented by Buick with Matt Weiner, Seth Davis from Sports Illustrated, Steve Smith, one of the great Spartans of all time, and VCU head coach Shaka Smart. And the bright young stars on the landscape of college basketball coaching. All coming up after the game. Right here on TBS, Wilbur gets a Murphy screen, and this is over Vander Blue, a male rather. Mayo did not get the rebound, but was so by Jimmy Wilson. Well, that time Marquette came out of the 2-3 zone. You know, a little bit smallest right now. You want to protect Jay Crowder particularly. 
in foul trouble. There is Johnson with him, trying to push it. Azaria losing the ball, and the Blues got it. Mayo. Crowder, a three! Oh, that would have been huge. Murphy with the rebound. That's a strong rebound by Eric Murphy. Crowder still struggling here. We talked about him being the best player on the floor in this second half. He's yet to score. Three of ten. Crowder with eight. Takes up the line. Crowder's been averaging, as we mentioned before, 21 in the tournament. Just eight points tonight. Wilbrickin. Nice ball, ball, it sure is. Murphy open on the baseline. Good rebound by Patrick Young. Might have got away with the travel there. Walker with a three. And the Oswald checks it over and brings it back to the Golden Eagles. He's got four. And takes it all the way to the other end with a foul called on the Gators. Looked like Wilbekin was in there reaching. And Wilbekin will pick up his first personal foul. I know there are about 10 minutes left in this ball game. That last Florida possession, though, I thought Irvin Walker could have backed it out and forced Marquette to play defense once again. I mean, they have the advantage. They've got the lead. And they were really in rhythm with the ball movement. They could have found another open shooter just by moving that ball. Instead, he takes a quick shot, which leads the Marquette transition. Remember I said quick shot and turnovers. That's how Marquette gets the run. Beal for Wilbekin. Johnson make him him at the line. Got to make him pay though if you're Marquette. You're missing too many free throws here in this second half. And you get down eight, nine, ten points and you're trying to struggle to get yourself back into a ball game. Every little thing counts. Soldier Wilbekin just picked up his first. Here's Walker. Young is out there. Beal, who's been the leading scorer. Murphy, Rosario, the Gator, five. Boy, Mayo dog and Bradley Beal. And Murphy, a three. And the rebound hit down by Vander Blue. Galloping the other way and uh, picked up by Murphy. Is that off the back? The back extension? It, it looks off? like it, but it was hard to tell. We had different depth perception. Officials right there. It did go behind the basket, no question. Bradley Beal with a Murphy screen. Wilson comes out on Beal. Walker guarded by Jay Crowder. Murphy is picked up by Mayo. Mismatch. Mayo needs to hold his ground, man. Murphy not necessarily a post-up player. Johnson Odom takes it in. Ooh. That's a travel. And you can see the leading scores, what they've been averaging and what they have posted tonight. Well, you credit Florida. Pretty good defense. Jay Crowder in foul trouble. Devontae Gardner knee bothering him. So he doesn't have any lift. And Darius Johnson Odom's getting the shot. Yeah, but he's 4 of 11. So that's not a great percentage. Obviously, he has 11 points. But if you're taking 11 shots to get 11 points, that's what I said. He's not good. He's getting the shots. They didn't say he was making them. <laughs> Derek Wilson has come in. Freshman from Anchorage. Four Marquette. Beal. Walker. The fake Mayo pick. And picked up by John Mayo. So what, Florida is letting Marquette hang around here. Marquette just can't score a basket. Crowder is 3 of 10 with a whistle. Timeout Marquette. Night where they're shooting 29%. Eight and a half to play here in the second half. The winner going to the Elite Eight. They'll play Louisville on Saturday. And some of the numbers so far through this one. Florida in that basketball as we sold 342 made three coming into tonight's contest. Six of 22 from downtown. In the tournament, they've been 7 of 42 in their first two games against Virginia and Norfolk State. Cadugan back in, Crowder with the ball. Marquette began at 6 of 10 tonight from the field. On their way since that time, 21%, 9 of 41. Gardner, Murphy defender. The way by Beal, shoved in there by Murphy. That's all in seconds on the shot clock. That's all I would do about Murphy. I would just stay in front, keep my hands up. And make Gardner shoot over. And you don't need any help. No. Murphy picks up his third personal foul for the Gators, the sophomore. 
And uh, once again, Devontae Gardner at the free throw line. Sometimes guys give in the instinct, though. Mm -hmm. Hands straight up. Guy gets ready to shot. They lower those hands thinking they need a piece of the ball. That requires an awful lot of discipline to play the defense we're talking about. Gardner from Virginia, as we talked about before, two-time first-team All-State selection last year as a freshman, the six-man award winner for this Marquette team. Back in the game comes Vander Blue, and out goes Kadugan. Yeah, offense, defense. Mm -hmm. Kadugan with those four fouls. Now you got Vander Blue on the floor. But you let Kadugan at the offensive end run your offense. 7 to 12 shooting from the free throw line for the Golden Eagles tonight. And the Gators have shot 6 of 7 from the strike. Gardner is out. And Jamil Wilson shuts back in. Well, here's the time for Marquette. If they're going to make a run in this game, it's going to have to be within the next two minutes. Well, Jay Crowder is going to be real careful here. Marquette's on an 8 to 2 run. A couple of times he tried to step and cut off a path. Almost made contact. Wilson will pick up the foul for the market Golden Eagles. First on him. 8.06 to play. Look at Billy Donovan, who played in the Final Four. Assistant coach at Kentucky with Patino. Now in his 16th season with the Gators. Longest tenured head coach in the Southeastern Conference, Billy Donovan. Oldest is a 17-year-old college freshman with a try of his field. Boy, once again, just recognizing situations and taking advantage of it. No indecision whatsoever. Again, a freshman playing like a veteran. 17 points, deal is 7 of 8. There's the weak side help, though, for Marquette. Someone has to rotate over. That's what Beal recognized. Crowder, 3 of 10. He's got 10. We're hanging around there. We just showed you moments ago that graphic about how they charge back from deficits off in this past season. Yeah, but they can't trade baskets. They need stops and to get out in transition. Timely three would be kind of nice right about now. Beal to Murphy to Beal. Locked and loaded, missing the three and picked up by Vander Blue. Seven to play. And a push up. Crowder, big shot right here. A whistle and a Gator foul. Carl Wilbekin shoving his way to get free. Picks up his second foul for the Gators. 6.53 to play. You got it. Thank you very much, Greg. And, of course, in St. Louis beginning tomorrow night, North Carolina, Ohio. North Carolina State, Kansas right here on TBS. Here we're under seven to play. Crowder, a three, rebound by Beal. What is interesting about Florida is Boynton and Walker have gone scoreless in the second half so far for the Gators. Yeah, they haven't been involved in the offense. They've been relying heavily on Bradley Beal, who has done nothing but deliver. They were Crowder's last two shots. Three have been in and out. But that 0 for 6 right now on that score sheet. Doesn't tell you how close they are, right? There's Boynton off to Young. Five on the shot clock with the turnover. Talked about coming into the game that Crowder, on paper, was the best player on the floor, but really has struggled with some of the size and just really missing shots for the Golden Eagles. Well, think about this. The last 10 games for Crowder, averaging 21 points, 11 rebounds, seven double-doubles. Here is Johnson Odom. Trying to get it back all in one shot. The last three possessions, two threes by Crowder and one by Johnson Odom. Yeah, everybody knows there's no such thing as an eight-point shot. Murphy. And Young is trying to climb the ladder and get that ball with a shove inside and 5.48 to play here in the second half. The foul goes on Gardner for a second time. The winner here will take on the Louisville Cardinals. 4.30 Eastern is now the set time for Louisville against either Florida or Marquette. Saturday. Young puts it in. He's got seven. The average is 10 a game. Kadugan playing with four fouls. 
whistle and a timeout for Marquette. Buzz Williams wants to continue to rally his team, but they trail again by 10. Well, the Sweet 16 continues tomorrow with doubleheaders on CBS and TBS. It all starts with the Infinity NCAA tip-off show at 6 o'clock on TBS. By the way, Shaka Smart will be in the Atlanta studio. Talk about that Kentucky-Indiana game. I'm sure those Kentucky players are thinking about James Brown and the big payback. Number the two losses Kentucky has had this season. There's a Bloomington early in the year. Shot clock at 16, Mayo for three. Hadugan, Gardner, uh, right on the doorstep. He couldn't get it to go. Crowder, look at the crowd inside. Murphy saved it. And here comes Young. Hadugan is on his tail. And that sequence was a story of the game for Marquette. Oh, so close, with no cigars. Hadugan shaking his head. What a frustrating night it's been for the current Big East player of the year. Beal is working on Mayo. Screened by Young. Opening the door. Beal to the rack. Well, when it rains, it pours. Mama said there'd be days like this. And just the frustration by Marquette of Gardner and Crowder just can't get anything to go at the rim for Marquette. Gardner picks up his third personal foul. But you mentioned before, Kevin, about uh, Boynton and Walker not really scoring. Well, all they're saying is give it to the young fella. Yeah. Why not? Let him handle it. Here's a Beal at the line. He's an interesting story as Gardner will trudge off, as will Young. Beal is the middle child of five boys. He has two older brothers who played Division I college football. One is a wide receiver in Northern Illinois, the other an offensive lineman in Alabama. And get this, he's got two younger brothers that both weigh over 400 pounds. Twins. 300 pounds, excuse Twins. me. Twins over 300 pounds. And you know where their future is on the grid line, probably. And here's Beal, who's a tough kid, and they had some terrific pickup games. Marty, it's a, it's an interesting story, but a very athletic family he comes from. I would say so, and some big boys in that family too, Kevin, but Bradley Bill has certainly been fantastic for Billy Donovan this year. And when he was looking for a leader earlier this year, he knew Irving Walker wasn't the vocal leader maybe that he needed. Kenny Boynton wasn't that guy, but Beal was that guy. Even as a freshman, he turned to him, handed him the key, said, listen, you be the vocal leader. But Bradley said when he came in, he didn't want to step on any toes. He was afraid to do that. Now he says he's comfortable being that vocal leader. And he told me yesterday Today, I've just playing, been playing my ball game the last couple weeks. I would say his brand of ball game is pretty good, Kevin, wouldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. And because he's so physical, Lenny, it allows Donovan and Ford to keep three guards on the floor because he can rebound. Oh, absolutely. He's been a terrific rebounder. Doesn't mind sticking his nose in there. But, again, when you come from a family with such large people oh, yeah. and you're <laughs> smack in the middle, you're happy to come to a place like this where you can voice your opinion. Walker right in front. Finally gets one to drop. He's got eight after missing his shots. With six in the first half. You get tired of being a little brother. Yeah. But a couple of younger sibs were 300 apiece. That's pretty good. Prather was moving. Crowder was jumping at him. 4.15 to play here in the second half. Prather picks up his third personal foul. Prather was trying to get around the front of Crowder. Just a little bit late there. Good call there by the official. You know, when you get went down for the Gators, you take a look at Jay Crowder. But when, when you get went down, we touched on this back in the first half. I don't know if Ford really had a good compass on what kind of team they were going to be because he meant so much to the team defensively in particular. Sure. I mean, he was uh, the physical guy. He was kind of the enforcer on that team. He's got good size, good strength. He would have matched up nicely with a Jay Crowder. But Florida's made the adjustment. No question about it. Jay Crowder. Now he's just going to turn the basketball over here if you're the Gator. Oh, well, right in the grip, and he got out of it. Outside, pointing for three. And you don't need quick shots, though. Mayo as well. From Crowder, Mayo. Fought is in for two. Great job, I'm with you, man. Why take that shot so quickly? 
Find some time off the clock. He had a double-digit lead here. Now he's down to nine. Scramble in the game. Now Billy Donovan gets him under control. Now they bring it out, Bradley Beal, looking to shave some time off that clock. And the matchup with Wilson on Beal. Beal's going to hand that ball all day if he wanted to. Mayo knocks it away. Call a timeout. That's what he got. Mark Peck got the timeout. They'll have possession, and they've got timeout. That's their last one. Marquette uh, coach, as you take a look at the game reset right there, Marquette coach Coach Williams says, I always want to be the toughest team, maybe more so than anything else. I don't want to be too tactical or too technical. I just want to be the toughest. They showed some toughness on this play seconds ago. Well, Todd Mayo, again, this is not the first time he's dove on the floor to gain possession and alertly calls timeout because the possession arrow was pointing to Florida. So in a tie-up situation, he would have lost possession. All too often, guys call timeout in that situation, not knowing which way the arrow is going. Usually, they wind up losing the timeout. The arrow would have gone their way anyway. And if you're Marquette, you're down nine. You've missed your last eight three-pointers. So you figure if you can play inside out, Crowder, who's been struggling all evening, is due along with Darius Johnson Odom. So I. I'm Buzz Williams. I try to drop a play here to see if I can get a quick three here. Cut this down to six with 3.27 to play. But it, it's got, it's got to be off penetration. you got to go to the basket hard. You get a quick three if it presents itself, or you get a two, but you got to go to the basket. You can't settle for perimeter passing. Basically a full shot clock with which to work. Crowder, Kadugan, long shot, Mayo, a big time three, a 7 nothing run by Marquette. It's the, the first Marquette three-pointer in the last 21 minutes. Foul by Wilson. You don't need a foul in this situation. Here's the and just a simple dribble handoff to Mayo for the three. Look at our game reset. Jamil Wilson picked up his second personal foul for Marquette. It was 58-45 Florida just... 67 seconds ago. Well, two possession ball game now. If I'm Marquette, there's nothing uh, complex about it. You got to play defense. You got to scramble. You got to look for opportunities to double. Ball goes on the glass. You've got to go get it. And when you push it up the other way, you've got to hit the offensive glass. You got to pound it. Yeah. Remember, Marquette is out of timeouts. If you're Florida, too. Take control of the basketball. If you're Walker and if you're Beal. You've got to have the ball in your hands to make plays. Walker, that's a foul. And it's going to go on Darius Johnson Odom. He picks up his second personal foul for the Golden Eagles. Well, Ted Valentine said he got him across the head, and he did with that right hand. Good call there by Ted Valentine. Getting the ball in is key. Walker. Quickly pops to bond by Vander Blue. Shave some time. The more time you can take off this clock, the more anxious Marquette becomes defensively. Beals got 19. Murphy's out there. And you can lull him into a mistake. Walker. Got by Blue. Got by Wilson. Pointing for three. Rebound. Oh, big shot. It rebound. was indeed. Here comes Boynton. Murphy. Nope. And you don't need a shot here. This is exactly what you're supposed to do if you're Billy Donovan and the Gators. One more time off the clock here. At least 20 seconds. Marquette has got to relax, maintain their poise. It's a two possession ball game. There's still plenty of time. Walker the triple. Good! Walker's got 11 his first basket of the second half. And the thing that's going to hurt Marquette is they don't have any more timeouts. What a huge three. First three of the second half by Walker. And picked up by Walker again. And knocked away inside by Jamil Wilson. Well, shot clock running down. Walker sees that opening right at that spot. Point blank with 13 seconds left on the shot clock. He just took advantage of the anxiety, as I said, that Marquette 
would demonstrate as the shot clock starts to go down, as the game clock starts to go down. Nails on a little runner here by Walker. Rebound by Crowder. He's collected six rebounds for the Golden Eagle. Kadugan, Crowder, a three. Jay Crowder. Now you got to go for the steal, and if you don't get it, you got to play the foul game. That's his first three. Crowder's got 15. Here comes Boynton. And a foul going on the Golden Eagles, and the clock at 115. Foul on Johnson Odom with his third. And Wilson get hit in the face here, going out of bounds by Boynton. Yeah, that, that right arm, right to the to the nose of Wilson. It was almost like a follow through, and I think the officials are going to huddle up here and talk about it. Could have been an elbow. Inadvertent, but it looked like it could have been an elbow to the head. And this is within the window where and the officials can there go and review it. But that kind of back slap, backhand. Take a look now and see if it's an elbow. Because an elbow to the head, that's got to be a flagrant one. Now, is it an elbow or is it a follow through? He tries to get by him, and that's doesn't, an elbow. Doesn't matter. It hit him with the elbow and hit him above the shoulder. The rule is very strict on that. Right there. Yeah. Yeah, that's an elbow to the face. Whether it was advertent or inadvertent. Which would be yeah. a flagrant one. Yeah, flagrant one. Which would be two free throws. Personal and foul. Two free Boynton. throws in the ball Correct. for Marquette. Ted Valentine and Randall McCall, two of our three officials are over there looking at it on a replay over the official scores table. It doesn't look like it's anything malicious by Boyden, but you're right, Lynn. It's the letter of the law is anything that occurs above that shoulder area the officials review it. Now the question is whether it was flagrant in one their or mind two. an elbow right. or a forearm. No, flagrant two wouldn't come into play right. here. The flagrant two is automatic ejection. It's the yeah. same, the no, same that, thing that, applies, but in ejection. That was wholly inadvertent. You know, contact above the shoulder of the elbow, not swung excessively. And the two is extremely excessive force. So two doesn't enter into it. But they didn't call it. I guess they say it's nothing. It's been inadvertent. I don't know about that, man. That's what they're saying, apparently, that it was an inadvertent. Kenny Boynton is at the free throw line. He is a 75% free throw shooter. He is two of two from the line. The foul went on Johnson Odom, who picked up his third for the Golden Eagles. The third seed against the seventh seed Gators. Kadugan's been playing in foul trouble most of this second half, but most of this game, it seems like. Jackson Odom with a good throw. And it's hurt the Marquette attack, and they're totally out of sync. As Darius Johnson Odom just point blank missed that layup. Tie up. Florida. Florida ball. ball, yep. That's a good decision here. You get Patrick Young bringing another ball handler and Walker onto the floor. Now that was for Billy Donovan. That was defense to offense now. Also, you bring in a good free throw. Patrick Young about 59%. Knock these down, and this game is over. Johnson Odom will pick up the foul. He, by the way, and Crowder, the two top scorers for the Golden Eagles. Crowder and Johnson Odom a combined 9 of 28 shooting tonight. Yeah, you credit Florida's defense to a certain extent because they were pretty sticky, but Marquette had enough open shots that they could have knocked down. They didn't get the shots in transition that they normally get because Florida did a good job of taking care of the ball. Here is first team all SEC junior from Papano Beach, Florida, Kenny Boynton Jr. And Florida from the free throw line tonight, 11 of 12. Billy Donovan had a game plan, and they stuck to it. Very timely threes, were very aggressive in that first half. Johnson Odom takes it right to the rack, and he finds two with 13 points now. Are you kidding me? 
Why would you get a 10 point lead? Why would you foul? Well, well, I don't think they were young. doing it on purpose, uh, Lynn, but. I know, but. He... <laughs> Take a look at this. Why would you even reach a foul? Tell you what, that's a nice Just somewhat hip score. check there by Wilson to keep Patrick Young for coming over on that weak side help. Young picks up his fourth personal. Marquette, as they have now for a while, out of timeouts. Yobakin, Beal, Boynton. Held by Crowder. Crowder picks up his third. Darius Johnson Odom is a senior. Jay Crowder is a senior. Walker will check out. Here comes Young with Beal, Wilbegin, pointing at the line, and Murphy. That's the gate of five in the final 47.7. Now you you got to make and go to the free throw line and concentrate and make free throws. If you're Florida, this is a chance to move on to the Elite Eight and face the Cardinals of Louisville. What a story, the teacher and the mentor against the pupil and the student athlete. Billy Donovan played for Rick Pitino at Providence, coached under him at Kentucky. Beal with 21. That is a career high short by a point. 22 is his career high. 21 tonight. Kadugan, long shot. Wilbekin is right there. It's going to be Florida and Louisville. And Buzz Williams calling off, calling off the pressure. No foul. It'll be Rick Pitino's Cardinals against Billy Donovan's Florida Gators. Final seconds, Florida has advanced to the Elite Eight. They win it by 10, they led by as many as 14, they controlled the second half. So Marquette, the third seed, will fall, and Louisville and Florida have a date on CBS at 3.30 Central, 4.30 Eastern on Saturday afternoon here in Phoenix, Arizona. For Reggie Miller, Lenny Elmore, Marty Snyder of Phoenix, Arizona, the Florida Gators have advanced. Coming up on TBS, it's Inside March Madness presented by Buick. Beal puts in 21, Boynton puts in 11. The Gators are going to the Elite Eight.